<laughs> Sebastian, describe the emotions uh, just coming through with a big victory over Erickson Lubin. Uh, uh, two questions. Was that the hardest fight of your career, and how do you feel about it? Uh, yeah, you could say that. You could say that it was the hardest fight of my career. He, he, he made me take a knee, you know? Uh, he made me uh, think a little bit. But uh, it was a great fight. We gave both of us, Lubin and me, we gave the fight that we wanted to give to everybody. It was uh, an inferno. How's your stamina? Because we, we, we brought your chair and you're standing. Yeah. I don't know if you saw or not, but are you feeling like you can go another 10 more rounds? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If this wasn't here, I'll go a million more rounds. My condition's fine. My condition's fine, but it was a tough fight, and I'm going to get a little rest. So let me take so us through when you went down in the seventh round. You, were, you looked like you were hurt. You got up and got up and got up. A little bit. I was a little bit buzzed. I took that knee because I knew I needed to, to collect myself. And uh, by the time I got back up, I was fine. And you felt, and when the eighth round started, it looked like you were okay. You felt my uh, well, condition's 100% we were in there. Well, landed a lot of big punches tonight. Um, when did you think in particular that uh, the tie started to turn and you took control of the bout? Was there a time in the fight where you took control that you couldn't remember? Well, I think the second round when we dropped him with that uppercut, I knew the uppercut was going to land again and again and again. And the round we actually took a knee, I felt we were dominating pretty good until uh, we did take that knee. But then the round after, we came back and we did back on like the, the train never stopped. So and, uh, I got to ask you, man. I got to ask I gotta ask that question. So who you want next? The winner of the uh, Charlo Costa? Of course. Of course. Hey, if we can win all the busts at once, why not? You know? Uh, Absolutely. I want the champion next. This is this is only a little step towards it. But uh, the next one's a real thing, hopefully. If not that, we'll, we'll fight anybody in 54. We're doing good. <laughs> in the last round there, it seemed like um, when he was holding, he wasn't really trying to throw anything. Earlier when he was holding, he was still working. Did you sense like the fight was over at that point because he was really kind of just holding on and yeah, retreating? Yeah, I knew he was going to get caught again. Either he was going to get caught again or, or the corner was going to stop it because I took a step back and I saw his face. His face was a little uh, uh, too swollen already. I was like, there's no way he can see out of his eyes. So it, 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 my prediction came true. Were you surprised that, you know, Ruben's been you know, criticized for having a shaky chin. That's what some people say. But he took a lot of punches from me. What's your thoughts on his chin after the fight? You know, you know, these, uh, how they said he he's won six fights in a row. I know he's been thinking about how people make fun of his chin and all that. He's a tough fighter. He's a tough fighter, and he worked on that. Uh, I just know I hit hard too. So it, you know, I, I didn't I didn't think this fight was gonna go the distance, and um, we got the job done. Sebastian, how surprised were you that he survived? Was late around, but he was hurt when he got up and used the ropes to get himself up. How surprised were you that he survived that in the second round? Well, when we dropped him, it was the end of the round. When I went, literally when they finished the count, the, the, the round was over, so I was like, eh, that, that's fine. He came back in the third round, I knew he had the, the, the minute to rest, so it was fine. When, I knew he was going to be fine. When you're watching the fight unfold and his face is getting worse and worse by round by round, how surprised were you, one, that the commission did not stop the fight, and number two, that he was allowed to, by anyone to continue fighting? I wasn't surprised. I just knew it was going to happen eventually because his face was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, uh, and the corner stopped it, or the commission, I don't know who's calling it. His corner stopped it, you know, there, there's no way. You can't, you gotta, fighters go in there, not to quit, but you know, the corner has to do their job, and the corner did his job, and, and they stopped the fight. Do you feel that he'll ever be the same after that? I don't know, I wish him the best. I wish him a, a quick recovery. Uh, uh, um, you know, he got up before, he can do it again. Just, I guess, not with us. Your, nick, your nickname's the Towering Inferno. Naturally, we all know that you're one of the tallest uh, in your weight division of all time. But the Inferno part is something that seems to be a bit of an enigma to a lot of people. You get on top of guys and just absolutely eviscerate them. Uh, talk to us about your style. Uh, you're very destructive. You're a very nice guy, very kind. But when you're fighting, you're nasty as they come. Tell us about that. That's just, I just, I like to fight. I like to go in there, stand in the middle of the ring, wherever it is actually, and I'll uh, break faces with them. Whether I'm breaking my face or they're breaking their face, I just, I want to give the fight fans an exciting fight. And I don't think we did today. When you first dropped them, do you think if there was more time, you would have went ahead and finished them? If there was more round, if there, were there was more, more time, yeah, if there was, if, say that was the beginning of the round, yeah. I think we could have got the dub done. Because uh, uh, it, it fell in again, it fell again. Those uppercuts were landing. But uh, he had that minute to rest for that break, and, and, and he was covered. He was are, good. are you going to be um, uh, ringside for the Castaño um, Charlo rematch? Oh, it's, it's practically in my backyard, so I have to be there. I have to be there. That's where all the butts are going to go. And uh, hopefully, I have next. And you said before the fight, you know, uh, that it didn't matter to you who you fought after, but that Charlo would be the bigger fight. 
in the United States. Is that you still, now that you got this out of the way, you yeah. still feel the same way? Oh yeah, well, Charlo has three of the bucks right now. So for him to win this, it, it's, I see it not easily happening, but it's the one that's gonna happen. And, and if we could just go and take it off from him, that would be great. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking guys, of that fight, how do you, how do you match up versus Jamel Charlo? How do you match up versus him? Say that again? How do you match up versus Jamel? Me? Yeah, how do you match up versus Jamel Charlo? get the job done with him too. You know, uh, he's another fighter that likes to uh, sit there and bang and trust his power. And just like him, we trust our power too. I just think I was stronger. You trust your chin as well? You know, um, uh, hell yeah, I trust my chin. <laughs> when you when you went you. down, what was going through your mind uh, when you went down on the knee? What were you thinking? You seemed pretty cognizant. Uh, was that just to save yourself? Yes, yes. In the sport, you know, uh, you don't want to get as hit as much as possible because uh, you want to win the fight, obviously. So uh, I took that knee. I took the knee to recollect myself. I got back up and I got the job done. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate giving us time. Appreciate your time.